I was born in South Korea, and I came here when I was seven years old. And when we came over, my grandmother came with us, and she didn't speak English very well. And after all the kids left home, she decided to live in Koreatown in Los Angeles. So after I did my medical training, I went to visit her in this little senior apartment complex in Los Angeles. And I noticed on the kitchen table that she had four pill bottles. I was interested to know what she was taking. So on the outside of the pill bottle was a white piece of paper with Korean handwriting that I can't read anymore. So I asked her about it. She says, she goes to see the doctor who is actually Korean and talks to her in Korean. Uh, but she doesn't understand a lot of what he says, but he gives her a script that she knows to take to the pharmacist. So she goes to the pharmacy and the pharmacist doesn't talk to her and gives her um, instructions written in, in English she can't read. And what she has to do is find somebody in our apartment complex to write on a piece of paper, and that's why she tapes to the outside of the pill bottle. So whether they mixed up the bottles or got the translations wrong, I have no idea. So I thought, you know, this can't possibly be the way we do this for these types of patients. So I talked to my colleagues at the FDA, and they said, yeah, it would be nice to do things in other languages, but we're still struggling with English which kind of gives you a sense that, you know, they're not going to get to any other languages anytime soon. So I thought this was one of the areas that we could address. The big challenge with patients is that up a third of the population has what's called low health literacy, which means that they don't have the ability to know where to go find information. Once they find information, can they actually read and understand and sort through that? Can they then act appropriately on that information? So if a third of the population has low health literacy and we dispense about four and a half billion prescriptions a year, that means that one and a half billion are being dispensed to patients who may not use it appropriately. So giving them simpler instructions about why they're on it, how to take it, how to use it safely is, is a major issue that we need to address. So one of the challenges that we have in our healthcare system is we have this tendency to put everything in thinking that the more comprehensive it is, the better it is. But what's happened is that when patients read that information, it, there's just so much data that they just shut down. You know, if I could overhear a really good pharmacist spend five minutes with a patient, what kind of information would that person, would that pharmacist tell the patient? And that's the kind of material that I wanted to put on paper. If we were looking at creating a solution for patients in other languages. We had to start with English first. And when we looked at the content of a lot of the consumer medication information sheets that were out there, uh, we found that they were typically written at a sophomore college reading level. And for us to translate that into other languages didn't make any sense. So what we had to do was go back to the drawing board and say, how can we simplify the information in English and then translate that content. And to make this efficient, you know, could we develop a library of conceptual phrases, such as, you know, keep in the refrigerator, uh, shake before using, you know, discard after seven days, that we could create a library of, of, of phrases in other languages and then be able to leverage technology to swap those phrases out. So the way I see education fitting in for medication information is kind of like a quick start sheet. Those you know, computer boxes in the 70s where you open it up and there was the big thick manual and there was a single page you know, illustrator guide. We see education as that single page you know, quick start sheet. But if you have additional questions around the medicines, potential side effects, things like that, um, that manual re reference is how we view, uh, how we associate ourselves with the existing uh, CMI sheets out there. Our solution uh, includes medication instruction sheets to reduce medication errors, how to take that particular medicine. We also have what's called a calendar, which helps you under better understand how that medicine fits with all of the other medicines you're taking. And the third aspect of it is around proper techniques. So if you have a complex device or if you have a glucose meter, how do I use that glucose meter? So I guess from a technology perspective, it, it blends well with the content perspective. So you can't kind of like separate the, the health literacy from the content, from the IT side, because they're all interrelated into this platform that we developed through our company. Even if patients are given oral information at the pharmacy or by the doctor, 50% of them forget what you tell them once they walk out the door. But more practically, from the healthcare system perspective, 
Let's say you have patients who are being discharged from your facility. They are under a lot of stress at that time of discharge. They're trying to find transportation. They're trying to find, you know, who's going to take care of me when I go home? How am I going to pay for things? And they get a whole slew of medicines, and they go pick it up in the pharmacy, and there's, you know, seven different pill bottles, some you take twice a day. You don't know which ones to take when. So it's not surprising that we have a 30% hospital readmission rate. So if we can just simplify the regimen into a calendar format, you know, these are the seven medicines. You take this on mornings, these at noon, these in the bedtime, and what the medicines are for, we will reduce, significantly reduce, um, and it's just common sense from my perspective. So University of Connecticut, which has one of the worst HCAP scores or hospital you know, um, evaluation measures, uh, used our tool and found significant improvements in patients' understanding of medications once they left. Uh, San Francisco General also did a pilot study where they used our tool for patients who are leaving the hospital and have complex regimens. So they've been using our stuff with the most complex patients, not your patient who have like one medicine, but these are having like nine medicines, 12 medicines. And they found significant improvements in hospital readmission on 30 days. Uh, the Veterans Administration also did a study um, looking at hospital readmissions. And so when, when you take it all this into perspective, it really reinforces the common sense aspect of simplifying information for patients, making sure they understand is something that we need to do. So one of the challenges is, is how does our product evolve in the marketplace? Um, so when we first introduced our product, we focused on the language aspect and the health literacy aspect. And as we talked to more healthcare systems, they said, well, even our well-educated people can benefit from this as well. So being able to standardize this as a way to provide medication instructions for patients to focus on the entire regimen, not just on each individual medications themselves, is, is where I believe um, healthcare instructions around medications is going.